you said that the program is a month and a half, the, like the, some test prep course meeting a few nights a week. And that, that's great. That, that's definitely valuable. But the reason that prep course is structured for that timeline is because that's what most students are willing to do. And that's what it's economical to offer. But you need a lot more than a month and a half or even two months or three months to achieve your fullest potential. It took me an entire year to get from the low 150s to a 175. And I'm not saying it should take you that long to reach your goals, but five to six months is perfectly reasonable to devote to this given the importance of the LSAT. Then the other thing you said about reviewing wrong answers, looking at explanations, that's valuable, but there's still another entire additional side to it, which is reviewing everything you get right, but have difficulty with. And then beyond looking at other people's written perfect explanations from the experts, you should also want to engage in your own personal introspective review process where you look at what led you to pick or consider the tempting wrong answer and what discouraged you or pushed you away from the right answer. Actually writing this out by hand or typing it or explaining it to a friend or a tutor or someone like that. Have you done anything along those lines? No, I don't think anyone is studying outside, like really. My friends, they're working, so, well, they may studying for CFA, <laughs> but not outside, so, like, really, I don't have anyone. But here, here's an idea for you, then. Uh, so you, you're, you're lucky you have friends, because not everybody studying for the LSAT has friends. It's easy to get into your own bubble with this stuff. But you, so you have friends, and your friend's also studying for an exam, the CFA, which I understand is a, a quite difficult exam as well. Yeah, yeah. So what if you set up an arrangement with your friend where they have to listen to you babble about the LSAT for a half hour, then you listen to them talk about CFA for a half hour as you kind of balance it out and you explain things to each other. And maybe you don't care about CFA and they don't care about LSAT and that's fine. But there is something magical about speaking these things out loud. You don't truly understand something until you can explain it to somebody else in your own words. The common pitfall with reading perfect explanations online is that these people have all the time in the world to write them and perfect them. And they also have typically a decade or more of experience like I do, right? So when you look at my explanations or watch my explanations, I've been doing this for a long time. And I also have the liberty to take all the time I want to create the, expl the explanation, whereas you're taking a timed section or a timed exam. And obviously you haven't been doing this for nearly as long. So you see the difference there? Yeah. Yeah. But, but sometimes, you know, I, well, I work for a time nine to five, Monday to Friday, right? So even though I'm willing to put more um, time into studying and so, sometimes I have other commitment, I just need to like take care of other stuff too. But that's fine. It's just like, you know, if I have three hours each day after work and then sometimes you do three or four logical games and then re you reveal them, three hours passed. You know what I mean? So, so I can't just, I cannot do a large amount of practice within um, limited times. And then and I, I really want to go through every question, but sometimes I just have difficulty like wrapping them all up before being prepared to write an exam. Um, and, 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 and I think the logic game is fine. Like, you know, there's no exactly like ambiguous answers because which is right is right, right? So like, but I mean, for reading comprehension, just, I, I think I'm really bad at that. I, I don't know, like, is there any strategy for me to quickly improve that? Or like, this is like really difficult because sometimes if I don't get it, you know, like if it's not making sense to me, I freak out and my, my mind just phrase, like phrase, like I just can't read it. And I just like choose randomly. That happened to me when I was doing my GRE, but you know, like GRE is not on the same level as Al said. I, I know you wrote a book about, you know, if you're ESL and then um, this is a book for you to, to, to do dive into um, reading comprehension. I'm thinking about buying that book and also maybe some other books that can help with my strategy. So if I'm, if I'm doing questions and reviewing, and also there's some other additional explanations for me to, to reflect. 
Thanks for tuning into the show. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already to be notified of new episodes as I release them. And feel free to reach out if you need anything at all as you move forward with your prep. I'm happy to help however I can. In the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.